For this Lightroom tutorial, I'm gonna take this raw file right here and I'm gonna turn it into a much more colorful picture like this at the end. So this is actually a sunrise picture shot in Portree in Scotland and overall I'm pretty happy with the composition, especially with the little moon up there, but there is definitely some color needed. So first of all, what I'm gonna do is bring down the highlight slider by quite a bit and that is so I can bring up the whites. The whites will just make everything way more dramatic, way more interesting. And furthermore, I'm definitely gonna make this entire picture a bit warmer. It doesn't have to be crazy, but around 7,500 here should do the job. And a special trick in sunrise and sunset pictures is just to bring the color tint a little bit more towards the right and add a little bit of magenta. It just works and gives that little bit more color and punch. Then with the contrast, now with the contrast you have to look out not to go too far, but what is actually a great trick is to bring up the blacks and that will allow you to bring the contrast way further to the right than you would otherwise be able to. Now, as you can see, these cliffs are very dark naturally, and I don't want to make them bright, you know, I don't want to just bring up the shadows like crazy and make a picture look something like this, because it just wouldn't work. So instead, I want to go with different tonalities and shading of these cliffs. So the left one being very dark, and the other one having a little bit of texture, and then this big one being a little bit brighter. So I'm just gonna fine tune that with the blacks as well as the shadow slider. So going to the clarity now, I do think I wanna go a little bit into the minus here. Now plus clarity will make everything more harsh and because there are so many little waves and stuff and you know clouds, it just doesn't work to make everything super harsh. Also this is a sunrise, so go a little bit into the minus if you have a situation like that. Just don't be afraid and don't think that you only have to go into the plus. And finally, probably the best way to amplify the colors is the vibrance and saturation. Now the two sliders do a very different thing because vibrance will just kind of look at the picture and see which color is already very strong, which one isn't so strong, and then it will adjust that for you according to the strength you want it whereas the saturation will just kind of take every single color and bring that up and make it more saturated. So overall, it's up to you what you want to use, but personally, I definitely prefer Vibrant, although I might just add a hint of saturation as well. All right, so looks pretty good from before to after, already a huge difference, but what I really want here is a little bit more color in terms of the blues. So as you can see towards the left, there are so many blue tones and now it's much warmer, which I overall like, but I still would like to get some of these blue tones back in the picture and also just add a little bit more color differentiation. And the first tool I'm gonna use for that is the split toning tool. Now the really cool thing is that you have the highlights here. You just can go to this little box right next to it and you can add any color you'd like. So in contrary to just the vibrance and saturation, which amplifies already existing colors, this will actually add new colors. And since you can choose to just add them in the highlights, it will look very natural because naturally speaking, all of the colors come from the highlights, whether it be the sun or a lamp or whatever. So what I would suggest you to do here is go through all of these colors. It is very much up to you what you like. You know, some people might like a very warm picture. Others might like kind of a more pinkish color like this. But what I think I'm gonna do is go for a mixture between blue and purple. So mainly in the blues, because I can always add purple later on in the local adjustments. But then I'm actually gonna add quite a lot of saturation here. Perhaps I'm even gonna make it a little bit less dark. Yeah, something like this and saturation. You know, it's very dependent from picture to picture, but you might not wanna go overboard with it. So in this case, I think I'm gonna go around 65. So with the shadows, it's pretty much the exact same story. You can add even further color differentiation, or you could just add even another blue tone. For example, here, I might even add kind of a, yeah, a very light bluish tone like this. 
and you know just around 15 saturation nothing in comparison to the highlights here and from before any split toning to after you can see we still have overall these warm tones but they're just not as prominent and as kind of overdone as they are before so that's a great thing to use the split toning for go and change your overall color to something you'd like in the basics and then kind of bring back some of the colors that you've lost perhaps in the split toning. So going down here, now lens corrections is always something you should enable, so let's just do that real quick, along with the chromatic aberration, and the chromatic aberration, what this will do is get rid of the purple and green fringing on all of the high contrast edges, and especially you can see it in this boat right here, maybe I should zoom in one to one here, look at this boat from before to after, just looks way better and you don't even have to do anything in manual. Then enable profile corrections, I'm just going to choose my lens, in this case the Canon 18 55 kit lens, and I will just enable all of the distortion and vignetting corrections. And going further, now there are of course a lot more adjustments that you could do. A thing that I'm going to cover real quick is the camera calibration profile, because that will change your overall, well just profile, your overall colors and look and saturation and just hue of the colors. Now I think camera portrait is actually pretty cool because compared to Adobe standard, it's kind of more vibrant and it also adds a different kind of color just a little bit in the shadow areas. So I think that's pretty much all I'm going to do in terms of the global adjustment. So again, here's from before any camera calibration adjustment, here's after. There's a lot more, but I mainly want to focus on the local ones right now. So before I actually go into any of the graduated filters or radial filters, I'm actually going to go into the spot removal tool. And of course you can remove spots, you know, if you have a dust or dirt spot somewhere. But what you can also do is a pretty cool trick that I'm going to show you now. So let's just zoom in here in 1 to 2 and as you can see this the moon up there it looks pretty cool and I just made sure that I still had it in the picture but it is a little bit cut off a little bit in the top uh, very top margin. So what I want to do instead is go here make sure I'm on heel size is about the size of the moon just like that then feather around 50 works always pretty good and opacity has to be at 100. And now I'm just going to click on somewhere in the picture and it will automatically try to replace that part of the picture with something that fits in. But what I want to do now is actually just drag it over the moon and look at that we've duplicated the moon and it looks just much better in that position. So now all I have to do is grab another spot removal tool go over the original moon and remove that one. And the other one that we've either previously duplicated previously is just still there. It doesn't get affected by it. And I think that looks so much better. You could even fine tune your positioning of that moon, you know, just drag it around. That's a pretty cool and fast uh, trick here in Lightroom. You don't have to open Photoshop or anything. It's just taking you like 30 seconds to do that. So going further though into the graduated filters first, now what I want to do with these is first of all just make the overall exposure a little bit more what I want it to be. So what I'm actually going to do is make the entire foreground just a little bit brighter and then at the same time I'm going to go over the sky, kind of go towards the left side because as you can see here the left side is much brighter than the right side. And that is because, of course, the sun is somewhere towards the left here. But what I want to do is just to amplify that. So I'm going to grab a filter, a very big with a soft feather over the left and then go into the plus whites a bit. So not, nothing crazy, perhaps even a little bit into the minus highlights to make sure I don't blow anything. And then, you know, I could even go a little bit more into the warm tones here with the color tool. And you always want to make sure that you don't go too far. Perhaps color temperature would work even better. And then the tint just going to find it just that as well. And now from before that one filter to after, it just looks a little bit brighter, a little bit more interesting. And that's one of many filters I want to add here. Because on the top, I think I'm just going to close out the top to be honest. So by holding down shift, you will get a perfectly straight filter. And I want to go a bit into the mind exposure and again just fine tuning all of the adjustments. 
Then I'm gonna do the same thing with the bottom here, also holding down shift to get a perfectly straight filter. And let's add some colors as well, because right now we just adjusted all of the exposure stuff. So here's from before to after, but now I wanna go into the colors. So what I'm gonna do here is just grab a color and what I think I'm gonna do is actually go into the purple tones, just something like this, and then add a filter over the bottom right. So the whole idea here is to add complexification and more difference in terms of the colors. So instead of just having, you know, orange and blue, I wanna have different shades of blue, different shades of orange, and really interconnect them in a way that looks natural and just make everything more interesting. You know, that's a great way to use these graduated filters for, especially for the kind of broad and large adjustments such as, you know, entire sides. As you can see, I'm even adding another one to go a little bit more into the, yeah, perhaps a little bit into the pink tones and just a little bit of saturation here. Then going over the very right part of the picture and also adding a little bit of color there which one I'm not sure yet to be honest, but I do want the left side to be a little bit more warm than the right side. So I think, yeah, kind of a purplish tone works pretty good. Then let's grab another one just for the very top right here and making this even darker blue. So there's a real distinct difference from the top right to the middle part to the left part. And yeah, just something like that. You can also bring down the blacks or add some contrast. That will of course also have a huge difference in terms of the color. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all I'm gonna do. Maybe just another one real quick with some warm tones. Although just a little bit and then go into the color temperature and some, add some warmth there and just add a lot of warmth here over the entire left side. Again, this is a very soft edge because you don't just want to have a very, you know, harsh edge. That way it just doesn't look natural whatsoever. You want it to blend in into the rest of the picture very organically without you even being able to notice it. So yeah, I think that's pretty good in terms of the graduated filters. So we just from before any, here is after, looks way better if you ask me. But now I'm gonna go into the rail filters for some last final local adjustments. And what I wanna use these for is first of all, just a very big one. Actually, I'm even gonna drag it off screen so I can make it even bigger. And the reason I'm doing that is because I just wanna amplify this entire middle part of warmth here. So I'm gonna go a little bit into the plus saturation, perhaps a bit into the plus contrast, and you know, just adjusting the size of this filter. You can also hold down the old key to just make one side bigger or smaller. So that looks already pretty good, perhaps even, yeah, a little bit into the plus whites. Again, don't go something like this, you know, it's just too much, but around 10, 15 works pretty well here. So going further into the rail filters, now I don't really want to call this dark and burning so much, because dark and burning would really be making individual parts brighter and others darker. This is mainly making some things a little bit brighter and adding a little bit of color with it. For example, here in the right part of this entire water, I could just add kind of a spot of a little bit more bright bluish, something like this then making it even bigger, dragging it over here, right click duplicate, and just adding a little bit more color over here, not even that much saturation as in the previous one. And I'm gonna grab a new one for all of these boats right here, because I do wanna have a little bit more attention on these boats down here. So I'm gonna go into the plus whites, plus exposure, and most importantly, I think, plus shadows. So yeah, something like this, then going down a little bit on the tint, you know, it's a bit too magenta-ish. And also in terms of the color temperature, just making that spot a little bit warmer. Warmth really helps you to draw your attention towards that area and kind of cool areas do the opposite. And you can really play with these, you know, you can kind of combine them and make one part warm that you want to have a lot of attention on and then make one other part more, much cooler and much darker that you just kind of want to be in the picture for the shape or something, but just not be a main part of the entire photo. So yeah, let's add another small plus exposure filter over here, again with some warm tones 
and it's all about differentiation, it's all about making stuff more complex. And of course, you can also do that in the sky, just be sure not to go overboard, especially in the sky, because it's very, very easily visible. And instead of going into an entirely different color, just try to get a little bit of a different hue, as I do here with a very, very light blue, just in a relatively small filter right here. So yeah, I think that's pretty much it in terms of the global and local adjustments here from before any gradle filters and here's after by the way. Perhaps I went a little bit too far with the exposure in the bottom left here. So let's bring down some of the highlights. And that's a great thing about Lightroom, you can just at the very end go over all of your adjustments and just see is there something you've done a little bit too much, a little bit uh, not enough. So I'm going to go into the tonal curve, for example, and just bring up the highlight slider a tiny bit here. And then at the same time, go into the saturation of the HSL slider and bring down some of these blue tones. They were just a bit too much, in my opinion. So just going to bring them down a little bit here. And yeah, I think that's pretty much all for this picture. So let's go into the history and see where we started out with. It's a quite long history, but I tried to make this tutorial rather short and compact. And as you can see, it's so flat in comparison to the raw file here. And afterwards, it's really so colorful. I mean, personally, I love the look of it. But of course, if you don't like such a heavy edited picture, you can always just use certain adjustments, certain styles. Or, you know, instead of going 60 into the vibrance, just go 20 or 10. You can really use these techniques without going as far as I have gone here. And with that being said, I want to thank you very much for watching. If you want to learn more about Lightroom, then consider subscribing to the channel for videos every week. Hopefully you've enjoyed this video, and if you did so and found it helpful, please consider donating a few dollars to your favorite charity. Thank you very much.